everyone, it's Chrissy, your Life Skills and Deployment Educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. Today, I'm here to bring you a condensed version of Anger Management. Anger Management is a two-day course, um, but I'm here to bring it to, uh, and Beams, we have Building Effective Anger Management is a two-hour course. And I'm gonna try and bring this to you in about 20 minutes. So it's just gonna be a little uh, tools and tricks and a few concepts sprinkled about. Uh, so reach out to us for additional resources. If you do need a, an anger management class during this time, please reach out to us. And if we cannot provide one, we will make sure that we have one that you can attend. Um, so here we're gonna talk just a little bit about some anger management skills. I'm gonna say not building effective, just some anger management um, to bring about during the global pandemic that we're experiencing. It would be totally normal if everyone was experiencing more anger than normal. Um, before this incident, like a month ago um, in early March, if someone had told me that they were spending days on end in their house, I would say that is not healthy, you should not be doing that. Or if I, they told me that they had no plans for vacations later, they had no plans seeing their family, I would say that's not healthy, we need to change that. If it's uncomfortable, go ahead and do it. Um, and, and we'll deal with it afterwards. Um, so we are all testing the bounds of our mental health right now. So give yourself a break, pat yourself on the back, um, but let's talk a little bit about anger, when it becomes a problem, define it, and give you some techniques to deal with it, all right? So what is anger? Um, anger is basically a heightened response. Um, it is a late sign of stress. So you are experiencing stress long before you are experiencing anger. And um, for some people, they have been under a lot of stress for so long that anger becomes a part of their personality. Anger is normalized in the military structure. There are people that are known for being that angry person. Um, I had someone once tell me too, they said, I used anger in my military uh, position because it got me the results I wanted. I knew that if I blew up, if I threw a fit, if I screamed at someone, that I would get the result that I wanted from that. Um, anger is not a normal part of healthy relationships, so I wanna draw you to that um, to your attention as well. Um, but also realize that some people might have grown up a lot uh, uh, around parents who were angry frequently, and this might be um, a normal part of their uh, environment, okay? So anger, I like to talk about the ABC response with regards to anger. So basically what happens is you have an action. So something happens to you. Uh, this one I'll usually say, what makes you angry? And people will say, traffic. Right now I'm like, oh, really, where? <laughs> There's not a lot of traffic right now during um, the global pandemic. Um, but yeah, traffic's a frequent one, particularly in San Diego under normal conditions. Um, what else makes you angry? Rude people, uh, people that are inconsiderate, um, uh, robocalls, mailers that I don't need, um, people who are inconsiderate of others. Those are some regular things that I think of. So for example, I went to the, I went to the grocery store um, to get, uh, you know, do my twice, once every two weeks uh, grocery store trip. And I noticed that I went when it opened and so people were kind of rushing for the toilet paper and the paper goods. And I saw some behavior that what I kind of, so cutting off people with your big shopping cart, I developed a belief that person is rude, um, doesn't care about other, other people, thinks that their toilet paper need is higher than mine. Um, my behavior is to be rude back, to block my shopping cart when they're trying to get through, or later when I see them to uh, not let them know when they set down their wallet that eh, I'm not gonna let them know they set it down. But then there are consequences of that particular behavior, okay? So if we see, now how do you know, one, that anger is an issue? So that's another good question to ask. Like, does my anger um, work for me or not work for me? And that's a question that really only you can answer and the people that are around you can answer. If you have people who have negative responses to your anger, that's usually um, a good indicator. The other indicator that we like to point to is if you are frequently having to make apologies for your behavior, 
then anger is probably an issue for you. It's probably something you need to work on. So if you recognize that in your life or you have other symptoms related, like for example, we taught, um, I sat through a BEAMS class once when I was first at Fleet and Family. One was there because someone was going because they had been voluntold to go because they had, um, they had some disciplinary action against them. And then the other person who came was a retiree whose doctor told him that he needed to handle his anger or he was gonna have a heart attack, hypertension, um, have a massive, massive um, health problems if he did not get it under control. So consider that as well. You might be experiencing so much stress from life situations, from your environment, from just the way things are, that it might be affecting your health or your career or your relationships. So the way that we can kind of go about fixing anger when it is a problem, actions are going to happen. There are external things in the world and internal things that happen to us that are just a part of life. We develop a belief about what happens. That person's an idiot. I'm no good at this. I'll never amount to anything. Um, why do I have to be around so many idiots this, this far into my career in the Navy? It's not just you, it's a lot of people feel that way. Um, and then I have a behavior based on that belief of that action. I believe what I, about this person and I have a behavior based off of it. Cut them off, call them a name, uh, insult them, something like that. And then there are consequences because of my behavior. If I am in a relationship with someone, if I'm in an intimate relationship with someone and they annoy me by things that they do around the house, I think they're lazy and incompetent. I tell them this and I angrily put things around that. I put up things around the house. There might be some consequences later that evening because of my behavior. I didn't necessarily want to be sleeping on the couch, but I did through my action behavior and or for, through my belief in my behavior. So this is always gonna happen. This is not anything that you necessarily have control over always. This is where we can really impede the cycle, is what we believe about someone and what their behavior is. So let me give you a personal story, okay? A lot of times we think we know exactly what is going on. Um, some people will think they're really great mind readers. I've learned throughout my life that I am not good at mind reading, okay? So say for example, I've gotta get home, um, calls ran late, I know that I need to get my kids at a certain time, I know my, um, my spouse is gonna be home, I know that dinner needs to be on the table by a certain time or we can't complete homework in time to get in bed, okay? So I'm in a rush and I see some, somebody cut me off on the road, okay? You might think that person's a jerk, um, what a, whatever, whatever, fill in the blank. Um, I can't believe this person, why do they think they're more important than me? Okay, my family, I have a, um, a relative who was born with a brain tumor on their brain stem. And this relative that I have would go into frequent seizures. And the only way they knew how to treat the seizures, the doctors would say, get in the car and go to the hospital as quickly as possible so we can treat them. Can't treat them at home. There's nothing we can do to get them off. We just need to get them in the hospital as quick as possible. So uh, the father of this relative told me, I, when those seizures happened, I would go. I wouldn't even look at anywhere. I was making sure I didn't get in an accident, but I was going as quick as possible. And more than once, I pulled into the hospital with a state trooper on my tail. So consider that as well. I've been that jerk on the road. I've made poor decisions. I've been distracted while driving. I've had kids screaming at me while I was driving. Um, sometimes people are jerks, but sometimes there might be something else going on in, your, in, in their life. So the way we can impede that is by saying, hey, maybe they're just having a bad day. Maybe this is the last time they show up late to work or home before there's a big problem. Uh, maybe they're on their last leg with their boss. Um, maybe there's a medical emergency. Maybe that person's wife's water just broke and they're gonna go have their first baby. So changing the belief and changing the behavior is really important. Um, so I'll see you back um, in just a moment um, for the second portion of this anger management condensed.